it sounds boring, but actually most innovation, most of the time is incremental improvement, doing what we do better. Hey, my name is Armin Rao, founder of The Life Community that helps entrepreneurs worldwide to become better leaders. So far, I have published some 100 videos on this channel showing you how to lead your business to more profit, lead your team to more productivity and yourself to continuous personal growth. One important focus of entrepreneurs must be innovation. That's why I interviewed one of the most renowned innovation experts worldwide, Professor John Besant, on innovation and entrepreneurship. Please watch the following part of the interview where he talks about the importance of failures and what 3M, the world-known company, made out of a major failure. One of my questions actually was, do startups necessarily need to be innovative? I don't know if, that, if you have already <laughs> answered that question, but you know, I was just thinking, you know, there is this kind of urge, you know, to come up with something completely new. I'm a startup, I somehow must, uh, I don't know, revolutionize the world. Do you think that is really, is that always needed? No, uh, and, and again, for me, and I guess I've, over the years, I've refined and simplified my definitions. But mm. one of the things I think is really important that we understand, whatever kind of innovation we're interested in, social or commercial, novelty is distributed along a spectrum. At one end of the spectrum, we can do what we do a little better. It's what mm. we call incremental innovation. It sounds boring, but actually most innovation, most of the time is incremental improvement, doing what we do better other end of the spectrum, you do have occasionally the radical stuff that the world's never seen before. So you have a spectrum, all sorts of positions along that spectrum of novelty. Now, yes, some of the highly publicized entrepreneurs might be at the radical end of that spectrum, but they don't have to be. And sometimes they're taking established ideas and putting them in a different context. Um, one of my heroes, uh, if you ask me about a uh, my particular examples of entrepreneurs is a, a, a guy who was called uh, Dr. Um, uh, Venkata Swami, an Indian man, you can tell from the name. Yeah. Um, and he retired uh, from his day job as an eye surgeon. So he didn't even start being an entrepreneur until he'd finished one career. Mm -hmm. And on his 65th birthday, he said, I'm going to spend the rest of my life trying to deal with a challenge, an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. uh, he wanted to innovate. What he wanted to do was look at cataract care because that's something he'd worked on as an eye surgeon all his life. Mm -hmm. So he didn't invent a radical new operation. The operation he understood well, that was fine. Mm -hmm. His challenge was how do I take this expensive operation, costs about $300 in India, maybe $3,000 over here in Europe. Mm -hmm. How do I take that to people in rural India where the average wage might be less than $2 a day? and they can't afford it. So what he was trying to do was essentially innovate around cost reduction without compromising safety. Mm -hmm. Now that's yes, radical in terms of what he was trying to do. He wanted a tenfold reduction of the cost, but not radical in terms of pushing the technology frontier or something the world had never seen before. Mm -hmm. So for me, that kind of story, which was wonderfully successful and now 12 million people or so around the world can see who would otherwise be blind, but that's the consequence of entrepreneurship applied with incremental innovation. 